Hello everybody, it's Wendy, and today we're going to make a necklace using this piece of a seashell that I found on the beach. So this is in my um, seashell pieces uh, necklace and earring and bracelet tutorials. <laughs> so I'm just trying to show you all how you can use pieces of shells that you find. So, you know, I'm not on the West Coast where they find the good whole pieces of shells, but I find little things like this and they are really good for making jewelry. So first of all, our encouraging word for today is the secret of getting ahead is getting started. And Mark Twain said that. All right. So if you want to make this same necklace that I'm going to make, you're going to need some specific products. And I know that everybody is not going to have these products, um, but there are other things you can use. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what you could really replace this with. This is coral, bamboo coral. Lynn sent me these. And um, they are just really nice little skewers of them. You could use freshwater pearls if you had freshwater pearls. Um, you, I'm not really sure what else, you know, would supplement for these because the look I'm going for is coral in the necklace. So, um, but I do have this shell and it already has a hole in it. So we're going to be gluing a bead cap over this hole um, for a couple of reasons to make it pretty, number one, and for stability, number two. So you're going to need a shell, and I have bags of shells on my website for sale. Um, they do have a lot of these kind of little pieces in them. Um, so if you want to make a necklace like this, you could probably find one of these in your shell bag. I have um, some decorative jump rings. These are kind of like a fancy little jump ring I'm going to be using for um, the lobster to clasp onto and for this shell right here. Okay. I've got two crimp tubes. These are two by two crimp tubes. I have a bunch of ball head pins, these thin ones, and then I have a bunch of eye pins, regular eye pins. And I'll show you what those are for here in a minute. Um, I'm using these really pretty bicones that Beth sent me. Um, I don't know if these are Preciosa or Swarovski. They look like they are. They're beautiful. <laughs> um, but I think they're such a pretty color and I like them with this shell. I'm using some um, shell Hishi beads, okay. I'm using some little four millimeter pearls in kind of this orangey color. And I might use these shell beads here, these six millimeter shell beads. I'm not sure if I will or not, but maybe. And I'm using some um, four millimeter gold spacer beads. I've got some Beadalon seven strand bead stringing wire. And I've got a couple of rings here that I'm going to use to hook the bead stringing wire onto. And then I have some chain, and this is just a curb chain and a small, it's like a two millimeter link, uh, really small little links. But I think it'll be cute. And I had a lobster clasp out here somewhere, but I apparently have misplaced it. I've been all over the place, you guys. <laughs> I am unable to film in my studio because of the noise during the day. Um, Chris is just loud. He just is. And there's nothing I can do about it. And when he's on the phone talking, everybody can hear him. And I've had people complain about it. And I don't know what to do. Um, so I went outside today. <laughs> well, first of all, I tried moving in our bedroom. And that was bad because the chair that I was having to sit on in there uh, is really low. So I was having to put a pillow under it. And then the guy across the street that plays the drums was constantly banging. So today I thought, okay, I'm going to go outside on the back porch. <laughs> and then apparently every neighbor in the neighborhood decided to do some sort of construction or mow today. So it's just been really difficult. So now I am in our guest room on a little tiny... um end table in here and I'm hoping that <laughs> that I can find a little peace and quiet in this room to film I mean it's just really been hard but um I'm doing the best that I can but I've been carrying my stuff all over so apparently I have misplaced that lobster clasp but I do have a bunch of projects laying here behind me so I'll either go get another one or use one of those I don't know we'll see but anyway okay so I think that's all you're going to need, and I'll show you here what we're going to do, but let's first of all, oh, and some E6000 glue. I don't know if I said that or not for gluing this um, bead cap on. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that so it has a chance to set up a little bit. So, you know, this hole here is fairly sturdy. I mean, I don't, it's a little thin there, but I don't think it's really going to come completely undone, but um, 
I am going to glue this bead cap over it just to give it some strength and security and to hide that that hole. So it's like a 10 millimeter bead cap. It's a little bit curved. It's kind of like a filigree style. Um, and I'm just going to take a bunch of E6000. I'm pretty generous with it when I do this because I want it to glue down really well. And I'm going to put it all around this hole, this big hole. Like I said, pretty generous with it. You can always peel off excess afterwards if it sticks out too much or something, but I like to kind of be sure that it's going to stick on there really good. And then I'm just going to take this little bead cap here and I'm going to place it in the glue over the center of the hole and just press it down. Now E6000 dries clear, but still there's quite a bit around that. So I'm just going to rub some off with my finger rub around there and it's okay if it gets up on the bead cap really I kind of want it to because it I just want it to be coated pretty good so I'm just going to kind of smooth it out here just so it's not in a big big um lump there <laughs> okay and we're just going to let that dry for a minute so I wanted to show you guys while this is drying I'm going to show you what I found uh, just a couple of things that I found at the beach. So I went day before yesterday and um, I found some really cool things. I saw a baby sea turtle. I'm going to put a video of that at the end of this video. Um, it was going down to the ocean. So I thought that was super cool. I'd never seen anything like that before. I was really excited. So I videoed it, but I found this green sea glass. Now I found sea glass there before. And in fact, I found these white pieces when I was there the other day. But I've only found brown and white, but this piece was green, and I was so excited to find it, and it is very tumbled. Like, it's it's been in the sea for a while. So that I thought was super cool, because um, I've never found any green before. So I'm saving all of this. I'm going to do some sort of a picture mosaic or something when I get a bunch of it. And then I found the prettiest scallop that I have ever found. So look at this. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> And I'm going to make a pendant out of it. I love how it has these orange streaks coming down in this purple at the top. Um, I was so excited when I found this. I just couldn't even hardly contain it. <laughs> and that is, that is a very small hole in there. It looks like something, a drill snail or something tried to snack on whoever was in the scallop. But you can't really see it from the front. It's very small on the front. So I just thought it was absolutely beautiful. And I'm going to make a pendant out of it. So those are my two treasures that I found. I found a lot of shells, but those were my two big treasures. Okay, so we've got this little guy right here. And what I have done is I have taken my head pins, my ball head pins, and I have made a ton of dangles. So I've just, I haven't even closed them off yet. I just made a whole bunch. I used the pearls and the coral. Let me move that up a little. The pearls and the coral and the heishi beads and the gold beads and the bicones. And I used all of these and just random. I just made a ton of these. Now, some of them I made with a regular eye pen, the bigger pieces I could get to fit on there, the ones with bigger holes. And then some of them I just did with the ball head pins. And what I'm attempting to do is I'm going to hang them on the bead stringing wire behind the shell and around it. And I want it to look like coral growing, you know, like you see um, the coral, how it just branches out and grows and stuff is really cool. So I don't even know how many of these I have. I have a bunch, <laughs> but they're super easy. So I'm just going to make another one right here with this ball head pin. And again, I just layered. So I would take like the coral and a piece of, or a Swarovski, the little crystal and then a couple more pieces of coral if they'll fit. Some of them have holes so tiny they won't fit even on the ball head pins. That one did. Okay. And one more. If he'll go. Yeah, he will. And so I made some small dangles, some large dangles, some with eye pins on the bottom, some without. And what we're going to do is hang all these, but I'm just trying to show you I made a bunch of them. Okay, so all... 
I don't even, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. I have 30 exactly. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of lay them to the side and I'll show you what I did with this one because I experimented with this. I wasn't sure what to do, <laughs> how to get this look to happen. Um, and I tried sewing it with a needle and thread because I've seen that done with seed beads to make fake coral, but it wasn't coming out right. So what I did do is I took these head pins and eye pins and I hooked it together like this. And then I put this little dangle piece right here where they were all hooked together to kind of cover it up. But I'm going to hang this on the bead stringing wire. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a piece of the bead stringing wire off. Not a huge piece, probably just, I don't know, maybe... Um, probably eight or eight inches or 10 inches, something like that. It doesn't have to be a big, huge piece because the center piece is not going to be huge, but you know, I want it to be big enough to, to hold some beads and what I'm getting ready to do here in the middle. So I'm going to take my, um, crimping, my little, um, crimp, crimp tube. Actually, do I want wire guardians? I think I do. Let me grab. I'm going to take the wire guardians out of another project and then I will go get some more. Oh goodness. Okay, but I do want, I think I want to use a wire guardian because I want to make sure that it's going to stay on here. So I'm going to take my wire guardian and I'm just going to put my stringing wire up and over through the wire guardian. Okay, going through both channels, up one and down the other. Well, it's not going to be easy on me, is it? There we go. Okay. I'm trying to not use a ton of the wire here. And then I'm going to take my ring and I'm just going to put it right in here. <laughs> and I'll pull the wire guardian off, of course. Oh, it's been a day, let me just tell you. I'm tired. And I think, honestly, if I'm going to be able to film videos, I'm going to have to do it at night when everybody is asleep. Because I just can't seem to get any peace and quiet around here. It's been really tough. Okay, there we go. All right, now I'm just going to take my little crimp bead and stick him on this end. Come all the way up. And go over both pieces of the bead stringing wire. Okay, just like that, and then I'm going to crimp it. So laying it in the little divot here in the back of the crimping pliers and making sure that my wires aren't crossed, that they're laying side by side like they should be, I'm going to press that down really firmly, and then I'm going to turn it sideways and close it right up. And there we have it. Okay, so now we're going to start stringing. Now I want to use some of these beads on the strand before I get to my coral pieces because my coral pieces are going to kind of all be bunched up together. So I am going to grab some of these out. So I've got these little pearls. I thought these, the color of these was so pretty. I've got the little pearls. I've got my heishis. I've got these gold little spacers. And I have these really pretty shell beads that I'm gonna use. Okay, 
So I'm just going to string it up kind of like I would want it. I just, just my own, I'm going to put a gold pearl on. Okay, or a gold bead on, not a pearl. And then I'm going to put a shell bead. We're not going to use all of our dangles until we get up closer to the focal piece in the middle. So I'm just putting my shell bead on there, okay. Um, let's see, let's do a small pearl and a hishi bead. <laughs> well, I'm having such trouble with these little holes tonight, but I am. There we go. Let's do a hishi bead. And another pearl. Okay, and then an, I think I'll just repeat that pattern. Another sh Actually, let me do another hishi and another pearl and then repeat it. Just so, because I don't have that many of the bigger shell beads. So I'm going to do shell bead, pearl, hishi bead, pearl, hishi bead, pearl, and shell bead. Just like this. And I'm just going to do a pattern of this, two or three segments of it. Um, just to kind of give us a starting point. Actually, I might do the gold bead. Mm, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep to the colored, the colored ones for now. Okay, pearl, he, she, pearl. Ishi, pearl, and then another shell bead. These shell beads are so pretty. They're mother of pearl, I think. So that's what I've got. Now, um, that's probably enough. I'm going to start adding in my coral pieces, I think. So let me do a gold spacer. Okay, now I've got all these pieces of this coral, and I definitely want to go to go shorter to longer. Um, so I want the longest ones here in the middle and then back up to shorter, okay? So I hope I have enough of these made. I do have a lot of them, but um, I'm just going to pull them all down here so I can kind of see what I have. So the piece that I already put together this piece right here is kind of a longer one and I'm probably going to want it to hang over pretty close to the shell bead. So I've got all these. I've got a ton of them. So I'm going to go ahead. This one just has a head pin on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and make a wrapped loop out of this. These are all my smaller pliers here. And I didn't leave a heck of a lot of room for some of these loops or these wraps. So I'm trying to just, I'm just wrapping around <laughs> very minimally, <laughs> just like one time or one and a half times. But I am going to try to get around like one or one and a half times, just enough to secure it, but... I wanted to use the majority of the head pin for the beads. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of lay them out here. And I want them to be all clustered up. That's kind of the point, you know. I want them to look like they're all clustered up and um, just a whole bunch of coral pieces. So this one is an eye pin. And I'm going to go ahead and... This is a regular eye pin. I probably don't really need to wire wrap this. I'm just, I'm wire wrapping the, um, the uh, ball ends because they're so thin. But I think this one, I'm just going to go ahead and roll a regular loop back because it's sturdier. I don't have to worry about it really coming undone. 
and then I'm going to hang another one from it. So let me find one here that, yeah, let's use this one. I'm going to wire wrap this loop. And again, I'm just going around a couple of times to make sure that it's secure on my, that it's secured on there and not going to come apart. I was going to try to lay that wire down, but it's going to be difficult. There we go. And then I'm going to hook this to this one and it's going to create a long piece which is kind of what I'm wanting. I'm just going to hook that one right on there. Just like that. And this one can go over here closer to the shell. And then that one. And then this one. And then I want to try to cover that little bit up right there if I can. So I've been using just a little ball head pin and just putting a couple little you know like a little pearl on there um, or a pearl and a couple pieces of the coral but I don't have the coral out right now so I'm just gonna do like the pearl and one little gold bead I'm just gonna make a tiny wrapped loop I'm trying to make these loops as tiny as I can But I'm going to go ahead and just insert it right on here before I wrap it up. And that just puts something there over, you know, it just puts something in front of that connection of the two, um, of the two pins together. And just, I don't know, I just don't want that to be too obvious. I'm trying to cover that up. Okay, and then just trim that off and there it is and it's just going to kind of hang over there so there's those now let's see I have plenty more so I need to make sure that I use them all so I need another let's see let's do another eye pin so here's another eye pin I thought I felt something drop off there that he she bead fell off um so I could do this one on the top and hang another one from it. Let's do that. So again, this is just a regular eye pin, so I'm just going to make a regular loop with it. Okay, just like that. And then this one... I'm going to go ahead and finish wrapping. The reason I didn't wrap all of these completely closed was because I wasn't sure which ones I would be hooking them onto. So I knew that if they if I had closed them already, then I would have to attach everything with jump rings and I didn't want to do that. So I was just kind of waiting <laughs> to see which ones I ended up attaching to which other ones. So then I would close them up. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and attach this one to this eye pin. Just like this. Okay, so I want to make sure that the longest ones are in the middle. Then we've got a shorter one, and then they kind of come up from there. But as you can see, I want them to hang and look like pieces of coral so I may hook another one onto here so I could take one like this one right here that's a little bit longer make another wrapped loop anytime I use ball head pins I make wrapped loops um, they are just not really strong enough to maintain a regular loop so I always do wrapped loops with them and I'm just inserting it right there on that 
before I close the loop. And then I'm going to wrap it. Turn that right off right there. Okay, and we have another. See how it kind of splinters off from the first one? It just looks like coral wood if it was in the ocean. At least that's what I'm going for. Okay. So I've got all of these. And I may even hang one, like, from the front of another one. I don't know. We'll have to see. So, um, I've got these. This one would be kind of the next level. And let's see. Um, maybe, like, this one. And then a small one or a couple small ones. So I have quite a few more. So let me let me see what this would look like. Let me go ahead and um, wrap a couple of these small ones. So I've got this one that's kind of little. Um, I could actually attach it to here and do this one and this one over here. I think that's what I'll do. So it's all just kind of figuring it out. I've never made anything like this before, but I thought it would be really fun. If we could get this to look like the coral hanging down beside the, the little shell. So I'm going to go ahead and do this small one here. And then I'm just going to attach it onto this one here. And then I'll wrap this little loop up. So I just hold it with a plier and then try to take my other plier and wrap. It's kind of hard to do when they're this tiny when you don't have much left. And it kind of does help if you have bent nose pliers because it seems like you can get in there a little bit easier. And then I'm using my crimpers if you notice because they have such a pointy fine tip on them that they're really easy to get in tight places as well. So I'm just going to wrap a couple times around as much as I can and tuck it in. Okay, so there's that one, then this one, then we'll do a couple small ones. Let's see, I need kind of a medium length one. There's a good one. That's good. And then a couple small ones. And then I'm going to hang it all on here and show you what it looks like hanging on the... And we'll see if we like it or not. If we like it, we'll go ahead and I'll pause the video and we can do the other sides on our own. Because now you kind of see how to how I'm doing it. Um, if we don't like it, then I'm not sure what we'll do. <laughs> it's a trial and error thing with this one. You know, sometimes you have an idea in your head and it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. And that's just the way it goes. Right. Get this guy wrapped up.
Okay, so let's take this and let's hang our little pieces on. Just put them all on like we have them laid out there in the row. So there's those two and I'm hoping they'll kind of cluster up So far so good. So far they're kind of looking like I want them to. We'll see when we get the focal on. Okay, so there's all the coral pieces. And that kind of is what I'm going for is just a big bunch of them, big cluster of the coral pieces. Now I may have to fill in here and there. Um, so let me take, let me see, is this an open, I hope these rings aren't soldered. They may be. I think they might be. They are. So let me grab a jump ring out of here that I can hang him on. Um, you need kind of a big one because it has to go all the way through and I don't know if this is going to be big enough. Now the E6000 has probably set up enough right now to where I can do this. This one's almost big enough, not quite. I need a little bit bigger ring. So you do need a pretty large jump ring for this. And uh, it would help if it was thin, large and thin. I don't know if I have anything that's large and thin. I have large and fat. I think I do have some 12 millimeter ones though. I'm gonna run and get them. Okay, so this is actually maybe even bigger than 12 millimeter, it may be 16. It's a big jump ring, but it's not super fat. So I'm hoping that it'll go through here. And I think it does, yes it does. Okay, so just close that back up. It's a little bit bigger of a ring than I wanted, but I think we beggars can't be choosers on this one. Okay, and I'm just going to put this right in here. And here is our shell, and yes, it's going to kind of lay in front of these pieces. So that's what I wanted. I wanted it just to look like a bunch of coral and a shell piece. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side basically like I did this one. So a couple of longer pieces and then go a little shorter, um, hook a couple to each other and just do that. And then we'll come back and we'll make some adjustments and, you know, fix anything that needs fixed and fill in where it might need filled in and that kind of thing. Okay, so just go ahead and do your other coral pieces and come right on back. Okay, so here's my other side. I ended up taking off the little ones that were on the end because they were just kicking out like really weird. And then I ended up putting a heshi bead between each dangle on there. And that just makes it lay better. So I'm going to bead the other side. So I have... Um, my last one, so I need a gold bead, and I have tons of leftover dangles, so I made away too many, so, <laughs> um, but that's okay, I'll use them for something sometime. Um, a gold bead, and then my shell bead, and then I'm just repeating that pattern of pearl, he, she, pearl, he, she, pearl. So pearl, he, she, pearl, he, she, and pearl. And 
Okay, and then another shell bead. And then again, pearl, he, she, pearl, he, she, pearl. And one more pearl. Oh, those two are stuck together. And then one more shell bead. And a gold bead. Okay, so there is our focal. Now, we are going to make sure that this is pretty tight. You don't want it to be so tight that it's sticking out weird, but you do want it to be tight enough to where they're not flopping around a lot. And I'm trying to find my other, there's my crimp tube. <laughs> and I'm just gonna crimp it to this ring, just like I did on the other side. And I have a wire guard here somewhere as well. Here it is, okay. Okay, so just into the wire guard. Whoops, I forgot the crimp bead. On the other one, I didn't have to put the crimp bead on first because I didn't have anything else on there. I was just crimping the end, but with this one, I have to get that crimp bead on there first or it won't work. Okay. And then we're just going to take our ring and put it right up on here and go down through our current bead and down through a couple beads. Okay, just like that. Now, like I said, you don't want it to have a lot of, you don't want wire showing, but you don't want it to be poker straight either so just kind of pull it let gravity do the work and pull it down and we're just going to go ahead and on this end unfortunately you can't really tell if your wires are crossed or not I wish we could but I just try to hold it hopefully they're not <laughs> and I'm just going to crimp that down okay turn it sideways close the crimp and there we have it. And I'm just going to cut this off right here. And there is our focal. I like it. Now, I had debated gluing some pearls in here on the inside of the shell. But I think if I do, it's going to be too much, to be honest. I think it's plenty, just like it is. It doesn't need that. So let me get some of the stuff out of the way. I've got a big mess here now. And we're going to add our chain. And this part's very easy. You pick up a few of these things, just get them out of the way so we don't have a big mess so much. Okay, so here it is. Now we're just going to take our chain. Where did it go? And a necklace like this, I do not want to be super long. Um, I mean, this could kind of be a tassel. But I don't want mine to be, I want it to hang kind of up around the collarbone. So for that, I do my necklaces about 21 inches. Um, and I'm just going to eyeball this because I don't have my ruler in here with me. Again, I'm just handicapped right now with all this um, having to move around and find a spot. So kind of handicapped, but yeah. I'm thinking that'll be good. So I don't know how long this is. It looks to be about eight inches, six or eight inches. And I'm just going to lay my chain side by side and cut. Okay. And then this is to, this little rung here is way too small to go through that big ring. So I am going to have to hook it on with another thinner jump ring and that's okay. So I'm just grabbing a couple 
try to get two that match would be helpful. There we go. I have all my jump rings mixed in together. And I'm just going to open these up. And just hook my chain on. And hopefully these little tiny, yeah, there we go. They'll go through that small jump ring. Make sure your jump ring's closed up really good. And same thing on the other side. There we go. Okay. There we go. So now we just need to attach our lobster. Okay, so here is a ring for the lobster to clasp onto. And here is a ring to put the lobster claw on with. And that is our finished necklace. So I'm going to put this on and let you see it on me so you can see how it hangs. And I will be right back. There it is. Okay, so here's this necklace on. Um, this is the look I was going for with the coral and just kind of full behind the shell. So I really do like it. I did have to um, shorten the chain a little bit. I had, um, goodness, I hear her like bugging me. I um, had to take off like probably two inches off of each side. I had it way too long. So you just have to adjust that for how you like your necklaces to fit. This actually, um, I could even bring it up a little bit more, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to leave it just like it is. But yeah, so here it is. Um, this is what you can do with a twisty shell and um, especially a broken one. So I'm going to have lots more videos using these seashell pieces. Um, I uploaded one yesterday with scallop pieces, um, scallop, flat scallop pieces, and one today with a scallop shell on floating um, and floating beads. So this is the third one, or actually, yeah, this will be the third one, and there will be more to come. So I do have the seashells on sale on my website. It is www.beadonawirejewelry.com, so check that out if you're interested, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Well, there's a big vulture right there. He just flew down here and got something off the shore. I have no clue what he's got, but he's eating it, <laughs> whatever it is. I don't know if he found a, looks like a shell of some sort, maybe, or I don't know what he's got. There he is. He's having a snack. He's pretty big, actually. And he must have seen it from kind of far off, because he literally flew in, landed right where it was, and grabbed it. And I didn't even see him beforehand, so. He's got his vulture eyes, I guess. <laughs> Anyway, pretty cool. So, I think I see what the vulture might have been after, what he maybe got up there. And look what I just found crawling out of the seaweed. Oh my gosh. Is he not the cutest thing you've ever seen? And the vulture was going straight for him, too. And I was like, oh no, you don't. <laughs> not getting that little baby. Look how sweet. He's going to go up in the surf here in a second. I hope he makes it. Look how cute. Baby sea turtle. Oh, you're adorable, little baby sea turtle. Good luck. I want to help him, but he's probably good for him to do it on his own. Get down to the to the waves. There, there'll be one come up here in a second. I'm gonna help him. I mean, I won't let the vulture get him. Definitely not. There's some pelicans flying. There he goes. He, you're safe. I'm not going to let anybody get you. There 
goes. His little struggle for life. Oh, and he's making it. Isn't he cute? I've never seen one before alive, like, you know, in the wild. <laughs> Pretty exciting. It's one of the reasons I love to come to the beach. There's just all kinds of wonder and goodness here. Go on, buddy. You're going to make it. about got it there you go it felt good didn't it <laughs> oh look how cute there he goes swimming off <laughs> oh that was the sweetest thing I've ever seen I think there he goes swimming into the ocean little tiny baby I hope nothing gets him I'm gonna look up here and see Cause that vulture, man, he saw that from afar off and there he is. He's kind of standing around waiting for something else. And I kind of want to see if that's what he was eating. It's going to make me really sad if it was, but let's walk up here and I don't know where it is that he was at. Just kind of looking. He's flying over there. I wasn't I don't think I was this close to him. Must have been down this way a little bit. So the babies, baby sea turtles have hatched, I guess, or are hatching. I'm kind of looking for where the vulture was with the sea turtle, or with whatever he was eating. I hope it wasn't a baby sea turtle. I don't see anything though. He couldn't have eaten the shell, I don't think. Maybe he could. Yeah, I see literally nothing, so I don't know. I don't know what it was he had. But I don't know if the baby sea turtles are hiding in the seaweed there that's on the shore and trying to get down to, to the ocean. What's that? Oh, that's a fishing lure or something. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's a... Those nests still have covers over them, so they still have babies in them, I guess. I don't know what the vulture was eating. I didn't, I couldn't find it. I hope it wasn't a baby. But anyway, um, if I see any more, I'll definitely film them. That was sweet. I've never seen anything like that before, so that was fun. All right, see y'all later. Okay, so Here's something that's kind of interesting. If you see those yellow markers, see if I can zoom in on them. There's a whole line of them down through here. They are the sea turtle nests, okay? Some of them have um, like a mesh grate over them. Others don't, and I don't know why some do and some don't. I don't know if the ones that don't have hatched. I don't know. But anyway, those are the sea turtle nest. And there is a line of pelicans and that one vulture. And they just keep flying up and down that line. Up and down, up and down, down and back. And <laughs> I'm sitting here just watching them. Um, they're way down there now. This, the vulture is kind of like circling now. I don't know if he found something. I could not get down there in time if he did. But anyway, they're flying up and down, up and down. They're looking for the babies, I guess. And, um, man, it's the weirdest thing. And a lot of times there are, um, people that ride dune buggies along here and I'll see them and they come along and they are checking these nests and I wish that some of them would come along so I could just talk to them and try to find out kind of, you know, how, is there a way to figure when the, they're hatching? Like, you know, that one baby I saw, he can't be the only one. There's probably more. Um, but I don't know. So here come some sea or some pelicans and they're flying that line if you can see them They're flying right along this line now the vulture got really low. He went way way low and he was really Hunting but they keep flying back and forth So anyway, I might have to research it a little bit. It's it's kind of interesting And I mean, I know that the vultures and the pelicans have to eat too. See there they go right down that line 
but you man you want to help the baby sea turtles if you can but anyway we'll see what happens i'm just kind of sitting here i'm waiting for the tide to go out but i'm just kind of sitting here you know seeing what other interesting things i can see so it's pretty cool